Hello everyone, it's Mary Ann with Akashic Inspirations and I've decided to do something now for the new year which is going to be um, this month I'm going to do a monthly um, reading for love and I'm going to be using the tarot so it's a love tarot reading and this one is going to be for Pisces so for all my Pisces friends and family and um, I'm going to be using the Glastonbury Tarot, which is by Lisa Tenzin Dolma. Um, this particular edition I was really lucky to get because it was made back in 90, 1999. And I found it in a little shop. And uh, I do know, I think she did do a reprint a few years ago, so those may still be available. Um, anyway, I, I really connect to the energies of the, because it's from Glastonbury. Um, and so I really connect with the Celtic Avalon energies that are in this deck. And I really love them actually for um, divine union and uh, soulmate readings. So what I, I wanted to let you guys know is that uh, we are planning an event. Um, it'll be uh, in January 14th. And it encompasses, it's called the power of love. And it's to help you... Uh, connect with your soulmate frequencies. Um, we There's four of us. It'll be Dia from Maurice Oasis, Ron Schaefer from Simply Intuitive, Deborah from Glammy Witch or Intuitive Deb, and myself. And we will be doing a one-hour Skype call to help you uh, with blockages um, and to help heal and release those blockages and perhaps identify for you what's, what soulmate characteristics will be coming in for you as well. We'll be providing a soul frequency um, astrological reading, which would be done by, um, by Dia. And we have a, you know, a group meditation. So we have a couple of other things that we're also uh, including uh, in the package. And it's only $99. You can go to my website, akashikinspirations.com. Um, if you'd like to participate and sign up for it, um, and we'll be scoping uh, during the next uh, couple of weeks, and so I hope you join us for that. It'll be fun. It's going to be different. Um, you get four readers doing um, so much more. For any of you who ever participated in any of our events, you know we always throw in a whole bunch of extras. We send you um, PDFs. We send you videos. We send uh, private messages on Facebook so that you have all the information that you need to be able to help you through this process. So we go on to our reading. I'm going to do a nine card spread. And as we connect to the energies for Pisces for this love to rose spread. All right. I'm going to place them face down and then we will turn them over and see how we read. Um, I really appreciate all of you for following me, for liking, subscribing, and sharing. I, I truly appreciate all your comments. I'd love to hear your comments on, you know, how you like the video and if you feel it's something I should continue with. And um, I think it's going to be fun. I'm actually doing it because it's my birthday's in January. So I'm actually doing this like a little birthday gift, but from me to you. Um, and for me too, you know, whenever you do anything in spirit, um, and be of service, that that is the key. So, all right, let's see what we have. So the first one we have is the Eight of Chalices, or Eight of Cups with Renewal. The second card is Eight of Swords with Release. Okay, so right here we see a pattern with the numbers eight, but eight is also about the the eternal cycle of life, the eternity, the symbol of infinity. And here we have the emperor with the number four. And here in this deck, he is King Arthur. So beautiful. All right. Um, eight of Vesicas. Are you kidding? Eight of Pentacles. Wow. This is crazy. We have three cards with the number eight. And we have the empress. So now not only do we have the emperor, we have the empress. So some really very powerful energies going on here. Oh, lovely. Six of cups with union. And this to me is the card that represents that sacred union, which is a combination of the sensuality and the spiritual. 
And here we have the two of pentacles, the two of vesicas with change. Then the maid of swords or the page of swords comes in. And our last card, the two of swords with balance. All righty, where to start? I think we're going to address these issues with eight. All right, so with the eight of cups, normally in the uh, in the regular writer wait to row, you see a figure walking away from the eight cups, like he's done with them, he's full, and he's walking away. In this card, she's had a mask on, and um, the mask is being taken away. The ma their the true self is being revealed, and what's beautiful is that the inner lining of her cloak here. It has stars. So she's connected to this higher aspect of herself. That's why we have this deep indigo. She She's using her third eye for the self-perception of unmasking that which no longer, um, those facades that she felt she had to, um, had to wear. And here we've got the eight golden cups here. Um, uh, on the path, and she's on her golden path. She is on her illuminated path, right? She's come this distance, and she through this pathway, she has revealed herself, right, to herself, and taken away the masks that no longer uh, serve, and revealing her true nature. So I think this is about revelation and change and release. So here we have renewal. And in the Eight of Swords, we have release. So this is huge energies. I mean, obviously, the, the magician here, it seems, is uh, imbuing these swords with energy. The sky is red. His clothes are red. He's glowing. His aura is this golden, shining light. So as we see the lightning bolt, I mean, this is like some heavy-duty releasing and renewal. He's like, you know, releasing of this pent up energy and to just be able to um, um, transform, right? To change the situation completely. I'd like to read a little bit about this card. I don't, I don't read it all, but because um, it's quite involved, but I will uh, read a little bit about this card because I think it's really important. Um, it says, it's about, um, a recognition of an inner struggle. Well, here we had the inner struggle to take the mask away. And the um, it says it's a feeling of freeing yourself from anything that is oppressive uh, in order to create a happier time, right? It's about letting go in order to reach the solution and in a sense of empowerment, which is what I like about this because he has the power coming out of his hands, right? Um or it's actually a woman, sorry, um, a woman. Um, and so what's happened is that the power of our thoughts are so important and that they express, um, they express who we are when we stand in our power. And when we do that, then we become the emperor, right? So this is about the process that's going to lead us to reconnecting with our soulmates. And so as we step into the authority, step into the responsibility, here is a figure who is firmly seated. He, he His sword is in the next to him, but he doesn't need, he's not holding it, so he doesn't feel that need. And here he has the balance of the two dragons, the red and the white. So he's balanced within himself as far as masculine and feminine energies are concerned. He's sitting on the royal purple robe, so he's, his base is spiritual. He has the spiritual base. And here he has the horns of the ram and his a throne is golden. And um, it looks like, it looks like this is like the, uh, like an opening to a tree and all the roots are here. So he's grounded within the earth. His, he's facing forward. So he's honest, direct, um, and with authority, right? You know, ca characterize of our ideal strength and someone who is wise and able to lead us. And this has gotten through hard work. He's become the master. 
He's become the master of his emotions, a master of, uh, and it's been hard and diligent work, but the creations that he's making, um, uh, here he's got all the symbols of like fertility, of the chalice, right? Of, uh, looks like a, like a bird, so a messenger. Um, and so he has, he has balance. Look, you've got four vesicas on one side and four on the other. So that shows um, that the eight is firmly established in a firm foundation of the force, right? So we've become our masters. We've become the masters of uh, our empowerment. And then we become the masters of the divine, feminine. Um, here is the Empress. She's sitting on the ground, cross-legged, um, open. She's got the beautiful magenta color dress. So she has that highest of spiritual um, essences and unconditional love, right? And she's got a butterfly coming out of her hand there. So she she has she has been transformed into this divine feminine. Right? And this, in this case, is Guinevere. So here is our divine couple, uh, the Empress and the Emperor, the strongest, uh, the highest forms of um, attainment of the masculine and the feminine. And then what happens when each of us are strong and balanced within ourselves, within the masculine and the feminine, we create the sacred union. We create the sacred union not only within ourselves, but we attract our sacred union to ourselves, right? And here is this beautiful couple kissing, and she's got like a little smile on her face. He's leaned over. He's got his arm protectively around her. Um, she's totally open. You know, she's got that spiritual uh, uh, purple on, um, so she's uh, emitting that higher, higher essence. And he has the dark indigo blue of uh, being able to be the protector, be able to be the voice of truth. And as they come together, they have this beautiful purple and pink sunset in the background, which are all the, the colors of a, of a sacred union, of a union which is both a marriage of the spiritual with the physical. And that's what's going to be happening this year um, in 2016. I believe that we are headed for great things. Um, they don't want us to settle for just good. They want us to have great. So when things don't work out exactly as you planned, and I'm sure since this is going to be a mutable year, nothing is going to turn out as you planned, okay? Nothing. But if you go with the flow, if you're open to receiving, then you're going to be receiving things even far greater than what you had planned. So we go to the two of Vesica, the two of Pentacles. And it's interesting because he's in this pool of water. So he is grounded in his emotions. He, he doesn't have a shirt on, so he's, he's uh, naked to uh, and, and showing his truth, right? He, he's not hiding anything. And he's got one of the, the Vesica Pisces up in the air, and he's, he's in this balancing act. So he's in the process of changing from one to the other. So we're in the process of changing um, and going towards our prosperity, but through a, a groundedness in our emotions. And you see that the pool is calm water. So he is in contact with his emotions. He is in contact with the element of air. And he is grounded by all of these beautiful lush green trees that shows that he is grounded. And then we go to the Maid of Swords. So here is a young woman who is, I mean, she's got a beautiful green, light green dress on. So she's in the process of her mastery, right? But she is fully grounded in the earth looks like she's in um, like a type of ruin and she's got her sword held up but there is this fiery passion energies of a deep red sunset in the background so what's happening is that she is learning to use her sword of truth for passionate endeavors right she's bringing in that passion that uh, control of the thoughts of the control and usage of the ego in a way in which it serves her.
her. It serves her will, it serves her choice, and her freedom and her responsibility. And as we end those spread, we come into this beautiful balance card. Uh, here he's dressed in green, so he's perfectly grounded, but look at this beautiful night sky full of stars. This uh, He's got his eyes closed, so he's, he's connected intuitively to his higher self and to the whole universe, right? And his swords are in his hand and his arms are crossed. So it, it creates a boundary and it creates a sense of balance and he's holding them in perfect position, right? So I'd like to read a little bit about <clears throat> the Two of Swords for you as well. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. All right. Um, he says that uh, here in the book it says the swords that he holds are almost small enough to be daggers. He presents no threat to those around him, yet he is able to fend off a sharp thrust. Those who come too close to his sacred space and disturb his newfound tranquility. So the e equilibrium he has found is fragile and delicate, and it needs to be fostered um, in a time. Um, it, so it's a need to find this complete and, and utter inner balance within ourselves, right? And then that is what we are working on to be able to bring in this ideal union of the emperor and the empress and finding our union. So <clears throat> as we look back at the spread, it's very interesting because the you're going to be going through a time of great change and renewal and releasing and, and finding your mastery. And once you find that within there and you are able to balance the masculine and the feminine energies, you will find that sacred union within yourself. We have to find it within ourselves first before we can find it in the outside. And it's telling us at the end what you're looking to achieve is the complete balance within yourself. And once you find that, then you will be able to attract the soulmate, which also exhibits those exact same qualities of the balance. So I I thank you so much for letting me do this. I, I look forward to hearing all of your comments. And I send you many blessings for this January 2016 as we start with our Love Tarot Scopes for Pisces. So have a wonderful, wonderful month. Namaste.